Welcome back to Vikings Pulse Game tonight. Jim Rich along with Pete Bursich. And this is a happy beat, Pete Bursich. Yeah. Right? This is as happy as I am at 11 o'clock at night. I mean, you only started on Vikings Game Day Live at 9.30 outside oh, with, the stadium today. With this guy. Oh, yes. Yes. Look at this guy. There he is. Mark yeah, Rosen. Yeah. He's Normally, not I part see of... you in, in the window, but he was actually in, he was there in person today. So yeah. it, was, it was good to see him. Do you believe that? He's part of the Fox 9 family. He just can't stay away. It's amazing what money will do. <laughs> Very isn't it, true. Isn't it, though? Very true. Very true. That's probably why you're here at uh, 11 o'clock at night. Well, it's not. We don't talk on about that. No. All right. I'm sorry. All right. Let's get to the plays here. And this first one we're going to look at is the fourth and one a huge call by O'Connell here one let's just talk about the thought process here of going for it how risky was it to be this deep and come away with nothing if this play doesn't work is it damaging or was this really a gutsy call no, on his I, no I think I think this is this is something I think um, when the players talked about the attitude that they want to have and the offense wants to have um, Adam Thielen commenting about how aggressive they are. Um, this sets the tone, I think, and it sets the tone not just for today's game, but it's, it sets the tone, I think, for the season. And I guarantee you, all, all right. these guys are going to be happy to be in the meeting room, to, you know, each week to find out what's going on. All right. So how did now, Justin get himself so open? Keep here? in mind now that the Packers have not seen a stitch of film on this offense. They have no idea what they're going to do. They could watch old Rams film, whatever, whatever. But in this case, you're in the red zone, and before we pick this thing up Adam Thielen had started over here and then he made his way over here so that's a pre snap that's a shift okay okay so when you shift these guys back here have to do a lot you know have to do a lot of adjusting and this is this the red zone is a, is a whole area in and of itself that you have to work and spend a lot of time on as a defense so you have the communication because you don't have you're not playing your normal coverages like you do in the middle of the field okay so you get Thielen to shift, and then after Thielen shifts, okay. Well, we where's, it, where's Justin? So everybody Justin's knows where he's right is. over there. He's right here, and so he's gonna go. He's gonna go in in what be basically like a jet motion. He's running all the way across, and it, if you go, it catches the DBs by surprise. They hit, they were both flat footed. There was no one there to take anybody out the flat. You see these two DBs right here at the snap of the ball. They're they just they're not a hundred percent sure what to do. And in this game, if you hesitate, you're dead. And that's exactly <laughs> what happened, because you see the corner. I don't know if that's Jair there or not. But he opens up, and then all of a sudden, it's like, uh-oh. And he, too late. Jefferson's already gone. So just, I think, some brilliant execution and game plan right here. All right, let's move on. And we're going to go to the way the Vikings were able to put pressure on Aaron Rodgers today. Because, obviously, number 55, Zadarius Smith, Wanted a piece of him, <laughs> and he was able to get that piece here today. Yeah. And I, you know, I think one of the things is is we know about Zadarius, and he does play outside linebacker, but in the passing situations, they like to move him inside, and this is exactly why he is so strong. This this <laughs> yes. is a three hundred and yeah, it's his first start. I get he's a three hundred and some pound man, and watch what Zadarius does. He just takes this body. And there aren't a ton of people in the league that can do this. Get that right hand in there. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, Dalvin Tomlinson doing a, yeah. a great job keeping Rodgers in the pocket. Rodgers had nowhere to go. And when you push the other offensive lineman right in his lap, I mean, this it, you get a great view of it right here. Right, because he's over here, right? Yep, him getting off it, the ball. And it's just a straight and shot. Watch where he places that left hand. He gets that left hand right under the shoulder pad, then gets the right hand on the other side works across his face and he's right there for the second. I mean, look at that right there. That's <laughs> that being able to not just push the guy backwards. I mean, the guy was on roller skates, but to turn his body and then open up that lane for him to go make a sack. That's that's so, so impressive. All right. Our, our third one is one that had a lot of people kind of wondering what was going on here. This was Justin Jefferson called for offensive pass interference and uh, they were lined up right down here and it was a, a a lot of hand fighting all the way on this. There play. was, but I, I think I think the important part of this play is this: is that you have four guys up over here, so it's an empty formation, meaning there's no there's no there are no backs in the backfield. Right. You have four guys over here. Why? So you know that you have one on one <laughs> down here. 
And the part that I do love is that he was covered well. Jair Alexander did a nice job of covering him. Cousins still threw him the football. And I think that's the difference. If Cousins looks out, sees everyone covered, you've got to get that 50-50 ball to Jefferson. Now, it wasn't completely in bounds anyway. He might have been pushed out, whatever. But this matchup, I mean, he's covered here. They're, right. He's, he, he's not open. And he gets a little bit of, you know, gets some hands on him here, and this is the hand fighting. Didn't really push, I don't think. But the back shoulder, the accuracy to say, hey, I don't care if you're covered. I'm still throwing that football to you. That's how Jefferson is going to get that 2,000-yard mark that he's talking about plays just like this. Yeah, because that's what you said this morning on Vikings Game Day Live when you were asked, Justin Jefferson claims that he wants to be the best wide receiver in the entire National Football League. How is he going to do it? And everybody talked about his skills and the route running and the work he put in in the offseason. But you hammered home the number one point I heard is that 50-50 balls have to go to him. Now, my question to you is how do you determine the best receiver in the NFL? Is it because um, if, if, if it's a purely a number thing, okay. he's going to need throws like this once or twice a game to, to get there. A lot of people will you measure I mean? it that yeah. way. Yeah. I, I mean, I think he may already be the best receiver, in, one of, if not the best right. receiver in football. Well, let's go statistically. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding with you. Um, yeah, the, that, but this, that's why when I saw this play happen, it's, it's like what the Packers did with Devontae Adams. They would purposefully create formations to get Devontae one-on-one on the backside with some space. And that's what you do with your athletes. You get him one-on-one in space, and you just get him the football. Right. Maybe it'll cover. doesn't matter. Throw it to him. This guy's catch radius is something ridiculous. Just throw it in the zip code, and he's going to probably come down with it. Well, and, and Cousins obviously has that green light now that he may not have had last year, or either it was self-imposed Could be. a year ago by Kirk. Could be. Good question for you to ask Coach at a press conference. All right. I'll, I'll bring that up. I'll say Pete wants no, to no, know. No, no, no. Don't I do that. Don't I do can't that. do that? Don't do All that. All right. What do we